Hey everyone, this is Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest bringing you another video. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, today I want to talk about one of my favorite uh, prairie plants and that's Royal Catchfly, Selene Regia. So this plant is typically found, uh, its, its range extends from the northeastern to the midwestern parts of the United States. Uh, it can be found in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, uh, through Kansas, Oklahoma, down through Kentucky, Tennessee, all the way into Florida. So this plant is hardy from zones four through nine. Uh, it's also a tall plant. It gets to be about four to five feet tall. This particular plant right here is about uh, uh, five feet tall. <clears throat> This plant thrives in full sun. Uh, this is not a, a plant for your shade garden. Uh, it's going to do best and look best and perform best in, in full sun. It's not particularly uh, picky as far as soil goes. It can grow in uh, clay, heavy clay soil. It can grow in rocky soil, uh, regular typical gardeny, loamy soil. I have some growing in, uh, in some heavier clay and it seems to be doing fine. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty forgiving as far as soil goes. Uh, it's not a plant for uh, wet spots. Uh, a lot of the videos I do, I feature a lot of plants that I have planted around my, my pond, but uh, this really isn't one of them. This actually prefers a little bit of a drier spot. Uh, it can take some, a little bit of moisture, but uh, you know, it's, it's really going to do good in full sun and a drier location. <clears throat> now the name Catchfly uh, is pretty cool because uh, these flower heads exude a, a real sticky substance on them and what will happen is little insects will kind of land on this and uh, get trapped on there and uh, this isn't a carnivorous plant it is in the same order as a lot of carnivorous plants which is cariophyllales but it's not a, a, a carnivorous plant it but one interesting thing about this plant is that when uh, insects do land on it and die it will uh, emit uh, digestive enzyme and those those uh, bugs will get broken down uh, doesn't from everything that I've read on this plant doesn't seem to be any general consensus or agreement as to why this plant uh, you know has this particular feature it's just some sort of adaptation but uh, it's really interesting and it's a good conversation piece uh, you know if you have your friends over at your garden and you're talking about how cool native plants are this is a great plant to bring them to and show them and uh, everybody kind of uh, really finds it fascinating. Um, as far as uh, pollinators and wildlife uh, value goes, you know, it's not going to be for the smaller bees and stuff like that. This is a plant that's typically going to be a, a attractive to hummingbirds. Hummingbirds really love this plant. I get them on here all the time when this is in bloom. And uh, this is also a great plant for larger butterflies. So if you're looking for a plant that's going to attract large butterflies into your garden, like tiger swallowtails, uh, Eastern tiger swallowtails, black swallowtails, this plant will attract them and I do see them frequenting this plant when it's in bloom. Uh, this plant, you can uh, germinate this plant. Uh, one thing I would uh, would recommend is sowing the seeds in the fall. The seeds do need uh, at least a 60 day cold stratification uh, period in order to break dormancy. And uh, you want to germ you want to sow the seeds right directly on the soil. You don't want to you don't you don't want to bury them into the soil. So uh, that's a, just a couple tips for you and a uh, nice rundown on this plant. This is a, this is a beautiful plant. It has a, a very vivid, beautiful, pure red color on it. I think that's one of the reasons, you know, it's also attractive to hummingbirds in the way that it is. So there you go. Uh, if you're looking for a uh, great plant that would go good in your formal garden in the back, or if you're doing a meadow or prairie, this would be great in there. Uh, you could combine this with big blue stem, little blue stem, Rattlesnake Master, it's going to do great. Uh, one final point on this plant is that it is fairly slow to get established. So you don't want to plant it with anything that's going to outcompete it. You want to make sure that this has the room and the time it needs to get established. But once it does, it's going to come back every year. It's going to add beauty and wildlife value to your garden. And you're going to be really glad that you, uh, you planted this plant in your garden. And uh, that's it. I, I hope you guys found this video uh, informative. Give it a thumbs up. Share it. You know, uh, subscribe to my channel. Appreciate it. And uh, see you guys in the next video. Hope you have a great day. Bye.